Hi, hello! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Gianna and I love yoga and mental health and body positivity and openly talking about our mental and physical health because they're important. You only get one body, so let's take care of it. This video is going to be about my tubal ligation story. Today, um, September 16th? 16th. Uh, today, September 16th of 2020, I am going to my OBGYN for my yearly checkup and to talk to her about getting my tubes tied. Tubal ligation is basically just a procedure where they snip or tie off or put like little like metal clamps on your fallopian tubes. I think that out of all the health websites that I've ever looked at, Planned Parenthood explains things the absolute best. They create a very safe and judgment-free environment for you to learn about your reproductive health. Let somebody make their own choice. Give them the facts of what happens, what the risks are, and let's go. So I'm gonna give that to you. So the effectiveness of tubal ligation is over 99%. Less than one out of 100 women will get pregnant within the first year after their surgery. Less than one. Like, that's how uncommon it is. It works. Uh, on that note, though, it is permanent. So if you think that you're going to change your mind down the road and want to grow a baby inside of you, don't do this. All right? There are plenty of birth control options. But the thing is, is that ever since I was very, very young, I have not wanted to have a baby. I come from a very big family. I'm the second oldest of six kids. Between helping my mom with my siblings growing up and also following and like learning from her what happens during pregnancy and childbirth. I've just always been highly, highly disgusted by it. And I just, I never felt comfortable in my own body to think that I could do that or that I would want to do that. I have such a high respect for women who do go through pregnancy and childbirth. I think it is so incredible. I think the strength that the female body was given is incredible. So much respect, so much appreci appreciation. I'm not doing it. Relatively safe procedure, other than, you know, regular surgery risks. So you could get, you know, at your incision sites or just in general, if there's a complication with your anesthesia or unfortunately the doctor you had wasn't the best. You could get rash, swelling, trouble breathing, fever, uh, pain in the belly, um, other more th things that I'm not going to say because if you're really interested in this, you'll read it yourself. More serious and rare risks include your tubes being reconnected or becoming unblocked, an ectopic pregnancy, or bleeding, bad reaction to anesthesia or infection. I'm not a health professional. I'm just giving you the information that I know. Uh, I taught myself a lot of this, like a lot. Uh, Cause like many of you that are probably watching this video, the American education system failed me and taught me nothing about reproductive health. So <clears throat> I have spent a very long time researching my reproductive health and educating myself so I can take care of myself in the best ways possible, as should you. Whether you are a man, woman, non-binary, gender fluid, whatever your gender is, your reproductive health is important because those are parts within your body that need to be taken care of. Putting it out there, please take care of yourselves. I mean, other than the incredible number one benefit of this, it's permanent and over 99% effective. How incredible is that? I get this done and I never have to worry about birth control again. It's great. It's convenient. You can get it and never think about it again. And one of my favorite parts is that it does not mess with hormones. I've tried so many different types of birth control. And by so many different types, I just mean like two different types of pills and an IUD. But we'll get into this. So both pills, hated them because the hormones messed with my skin and definitely messed with my mental health. Um, and that's just personally for me. And I, that's what I observed. I'm not saying that this would happen to you if you took birth control. Everybody's body is different. Everybody has different chemicals happening in their bodies. But personally, 
Um, adding hormones doesn't work for me. And I also take medication for my mental health. So I'm already trying to balance out chemicals in my brain. So adding more isn't my jam. I got an IUD, it hurt really bad. Hated it, I would not go through it again. Was it convenient the past two and a half, three years? Absolutely, it was so convenient. It lightened my periods, my cramps decreased. Um, it was definitely, my acne definitely got better than when I was on the pill. It was definitely an upgrade from the pill, but I would not do it again. I considered the little Nexplanon implant, but they have to cut your arm to take it out later. And they do that while you're awake. And I don't want to see that. I don't want to go through that. Don't cut open my arm to take out a piece of plastic. There's always the patch and, you know, the ring, the shot. I'm not going to the doctor every three months for a shot, all right? That's just inconvenient. Your girl's busy. She's got things to do, goals to achieve, people to see. I don't have time for that. Babies just don't play into my life plan, like in any way, shape, or form, at least birthing them, all right? Your girl needs to keep this body intact. I got places to go and things to do. So those are all the benefits. Disadvantages. Uh, it's permanent. Uh, if you think you're going to regret this down the line, don't do it. But I personally don't think I'm ever going to change my mind on birthing a baby. I just, I, <laughs> my body's not meant for that. I don't want my body to do that. Sorry, the one cat is holding the water bowl with his paws and the other cat is drinking out of it. And it's really wholesome. Um, so what else about disadvantages? Oh, it doesn't prevent STDs. Which I think should be a given, but also if you're not as educated on reproductive health, then you might not know. But just because you get your tubes tied doesn't mean that you're protected from STDs. You must always, always, always use a condom. And there are still STDs and STIs that can be transmitted just from skin to skin contact that a condom or female condom does not, like a male or female condom does not cover. So it's very, very important to be educated on the STDs and STIs that are possible to catch. It is very important to use protection or remain abstinent until you find somebody that you feel is trustworthy enough to share this experience with. Um, and also, uh, have open conversations with your partner. I know it sounds awkward. I know it sounds weird. And like my friends say it all the time to me and they're like, how do you, how do you do that? And I'm like, I just tell somebody that I'm not having sex with them until we talk about our reproductive health. I don't care what your gender is. I don't know. I don't care where you come from. You should respect your body and somebody else's body enough to have a conversation about your health and the safety of your reproductive organs. Yeah. I mean, I look at pros and cons and the pros seem to really outweigh them, at least for myself. Um, cost wise. I feel extremely, extremely, extremely grateful, eternally grateful that my stepdad has really good insurance and his insurance will fully cover my procedure. It will not cost anybody a dime out of pocket. And I like, as somebody who for many years had Medicaid and I had so much trouble finding doctors who took my insurance, I had so much trouble getting medications because of it, having my stepdad, who I just refer to as my dad, um, because I genuinely like, it's so nice to feel like I have a father figure now. Um, he takes very good care of me. He's so good to my mom and my siblings. I love you so much, Steve. Ow, ow, ow. Somebody just scaled my leg. I definitely have a cut. Shout out to Steve. Mwah. Oh, I'm in pain. Did you put a hole in my leggings? Oh, thank God he didn't. <laughs> but anyways, I am so, so grateful for my dad slash stepdad Mwah! for taking care of all my medical stuff and taking me under his insurance so that I can have something like this done. So the why. This is, this is what I have to present to my doctor today and she'll hopefully take me seriously. I do not want to grow carry and or birth a child in any way shape or form and some people are like why don't you get a c-section and it's like because i don't want to have to recover for that many weeks i am an active young woman i have things to do places to go people to see goals to achieve i cannot be bedridden for weeks on end i am tired of hormonal birth control messing with my weight and skin and my mental health i want to go back to just my body and its chemicals, because I have this hope 
secretly that possibly decreasing the hormones I put in my body will help my mental health to balance out a little bit and I'll possibly be able to decrease the dosage on my other medication. Um, and if I have to increase the dosage on my medication, it is what it is. But I am fully aware that I might have to adjust my medication for my mental health after this. I have already acknowledged this and accepted this. Something that I haven't talked about on my channel but I will do a video about is my journey to finding medication that actually works for my mental health. And there's a lot of stigma around mental health and taking medication. And I don't think there should be. Hi, hello, welcome to my car. Uh, as I'm sure you could tell, uh, first doctor's appointment, <laughs> it was a no. Uh, she said that the odds of finding a doctor, even the greediest doctor, it's really gonna be slim. It's gonna be really hard to find a doctor that'll do it before the age of 25. You know, it seems silly to cry, and like, I tried to prepare myself for it. I figured she'd say no. I really did. But I'm still disappointed, you know? <sighs> I don't want to shop for a doctor. <sighs> so, doctor one? No. <laughs> she told me I have five months to figure out if I can get a doctor to do it. And then at the end of the five months, I need to get my IUD changed to something else. <laughs> Just really disappointed. <laughs> and I know that like, I tried setting my expectations low and it didn't work. Um, still really disappointed. I'm trying to not wreck my makeup because I have to go to class and I have to work. <sighs> Here we are. Stay tuned. Hello. I don't know why my phone just buzzed. Hello. Um, we are back. Today is September 18th. Uh, the crying video was from September 16th when I went for my annual appointment and my OB said no. Um, so yeah, here we are. It is the 18th. I got to phone call number 15 today and... Basically, <laughs> I finally found somebody who's willing to hear my case, uh, which is really cool. The woman who I spoke to on the phone uh, was much, much less judgmental than everybody else I spoke to. I wouldn't say she was even judgmental. She was just a little, it's, I guess, concern. Because, uh, I mean, I don't blame them. This 21-year-old woman's calling and is like, I want to tie my tubes. And the woman's like, you want to permanently sterilize yourself. And I was like, Yes. I was like, I have no desire to grow a child. I would never try to reverse it. People are like, well, what are your options if you want to have a biological kid? I'm like, uh, surrogacy, IVF. Like, I still wouldn't though. Like, I would not go with, I would not go through with IVF ever. Because again, the problem is that I don't want it in my body. Um, and people are like, well, surrogacy is expensive. And I'm like, yeah, surrogacy is expensive. If I can't afford to have a child created and born, I probably can't afford to raise it either. Uh, when I go to this doctor's appointment, I'm going to bring the list that I made because I have a list of, I think there's eight on there. There's eight reasons, but there's also parts A, B, C, D, and probably E under a lot of them. And with my list of reasons underneath, I have research. I have direct quotes from research papers with their citations. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, my doctor's appointment is November 4th. Um, it's a hot minute away, but at least I don't have to worry about it now. And I have a good feeling about this doctor. I really do. And I'm trying to not get too hopeful because I don't want to be disappointed again. But the fact that this man is willing to sit with me and hear me out. And like the woman on the phone even said, like, if you sit with him and he goes through this with you, and he can tell that you are unwavering in this decision, and he doesn't think for a minute that you're going to regret it, he will do it. And she said that he's done it before. So, fingers crossed. I guess I'll get back to you. Hi there. Um, it is the day before surgery. Today is Monday, November 30th. All right, Monday, November 30th. Um, tomorrow's my surgery. I have to get there at 9.30. Surgery starts at 11. 
Surgery takes a little over an hour, they said. And then they have to keep me for a few hours afterward to monitor me, make sure the anesthesia doesn't interact badly with me, make sure I come out fine. Um, there's no good way to film. I haven't figured out filming yet in here. Hopefully you can actually see me. I don't even know if you can see my face. If not, oh well. Um, but yeah, so really nervous about a lot of things. Um, I've never had a surgery or an operation before, so I've never been put under a lot of concerns about being put under, like, am I going to end up feeling it? Am I going to end up, um, you know, knowing what's going on the whole time? I've heard a lot of these horror stories about people who go under anesthesia, but still have full comprehension of what's going on. So I am worried about that. Part of me is also worried about not waking up from the anesthesia, which is definitely just like a normal healthy concern. I feel like mm, a lot of people probably have this concern when going into an operation if they've never done one before. Um, I'm really interested to see what my body is like pre, like post-op versus pre-op. Um, I've seen a lot of people are really swollen for a couple days. Obviously there's a lot of pain. You literally get cut open in two places. They fill you with gas so they can see what's going on inside of you. It's a whole thing. Um, so I'm really curious about how I'm gonna look afterwards. Here's just like a day before pre-op belly. I uh, had a yummy breakfast. I'm gonna go in and have some coffee. It's gonna be a good time, but this is this is pre-op belly. We'll see what swelling and bloat is going to look like afterwards. I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie. I'm really nervous. Um, I've heard glowing re reviews, glowing reviews about this doctor though. Uh, anyone I've spoken to that's like, oh, you're going to have Dr. Dominance. He's incredible. And I'm like, wow, I really lucked out. Um, but I'm also still scared. No matter like how many people have said to me, this is an amazing doctor. I'm just like, ah. but like, what if I'm the one outlier? Um, which I know, like you can't think about those things, you know? Um, I've been you doing a lot more meditation and yoga recently, trying to recenter into my body. Um, just, you know, connect with myself a little bit more. Um, focus on, you know, I'm going to do great. My body is strong. Um, I'm more than capable of healing from this, you know, and I know that the results are going to be so worth it later. That is not my concern at all. Um, I'm just, I'm still nervous, but yeah, sorry if it's kind of hard to hear me. I know it's a little loud in here. One of the downsides to Shelby is that it's really, really loud. So when it rains or when the wind blows, like you can hear everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's doing wonderful. I'm really loving living in here. Um, I am hoping to come home after surgery and be here. I'm going to stay with a friend. Uh, part of me wants to stay with my mom, but part of me wants to stay in my own house with my babies. Um, they're all sleeping right now, but yeah. So my doctor was wonderful when we talked, when I went to my appointment, um, he was really sweet. He, you know, I brought an entire list of research and my reasons as to why I wanted to get my tubal ligation. And he was very blown away. He was like, you're a very impressive young woman. I have no doubt that like, you know, what's best for your body. It's not my place to tell you what's best for your body. That's your place. I'm here to educate you, tell you the pros and cons, the risks and benefits and help you make a decision. And he was so wonderful. Basically everything he said, I already knew, um, from my research. So it wasn't news to me. Like, I think as long as somebody is educated and is fully informed and they are of sound mind, um, I, they should be more than allowed to make a decision like this for themselves. I think this is the best decision for my body. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm looking fabulous. I'm in phase two recovery room. Say hi to my mom. That's my mom. She's very, very happy that I'm just out of surgery. I am crampy. I'm groggy. I woke up and immediately thought that I had to use the bathroom because I had such bad cramps. I did not use the bathroom. I'm fine. But <clears throat> so far, I mean, given I'm hopped up on pain meds, 
Uh, so far, the paint's not too bad. Uh, I got these awesome <laughs> boxer briefs. Really comfortable. Um, yeah. So I have little incisions. We'll we'll go over that in another segment video. You know, when I can actually stand and operate a real camera. But uh, here we are. So it wasn't bad. In and out really quick. Procedure was only about an hour. Um, it is currently. He said it went five minutes over. She said it went five minutes over and she was extremely worried. <laughs> but um, yeah, so fallopian tubes are officially gone and they took out my IUD. And I also found out that I have spots of endometriosis, which would explain all my severe cramping over the years. You told me so. Yeah, sure, lady. I told you so. That's true. They're just cramps. Take a Tylenol. Endometriosis. Also, look at this raging zit. I think I'm going to name him Fred. Um, meet Fred. Um, but yeah, no, so I'm doing better. I got a nice ginger ale and stuff. My clothes are here. So I'm just in recovery for a little while. And then they send me home. And we'll just do home updates. Um, <sighs> right now I'm really, really tired, though. Everything feels really heavy. But yeah, so that's the update so far post-op. We're recording. Hello. Here's my belly. We're post-op. We're finally home. Um, very, very bloated. Oh, I still have a pad on me. <laughs> they forgot to take one off. Fun. Um, very bloated. Um, as you can see. Um, I will put a trigger warning. It's fine. So here's the lower incision because there's a lower incision and then they go through the belly button i'll crop whatever's not appropriate to put on the internet i think we're fine though but yeah so y'all saw me yesterday we did the little pre-op day before photos uh not as swollen as i expected which is nice um definitely crampy and gross but okay i'm gonna go nibble on some food and watch some disney movies now but uh, so far, so good. I gotta say, it's really not that bad. I saw a lot of really bad reviews online, but I don't know. It's good. Especially when you got a good pal to take care of you. There's my friend. Give me your hand. There's my friend. Your friend. Your friend's a good friend. You wanna say hi, friend? Say hi. Hello. Hi, friend. Friend's taking care of me so I don't die. Woo! But, um, yeah. I mean, other than that, there's not really pain. Cramping, yes. They gave me a lot of pain meds. Non no narcotics, though, because I don't, I don't mess with that shit. Um, but I do feel a little drunk from the anesthesia, which is really funny. I feel like I'm like two white claws in. That's how I'm going to keep describing it. Two white claws in. Um, but yes, I'm tired. So I'm going to go sit down, but I wanted to document this because it's important. So belly bloat. Here we are. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I am indeed orange. There we go. Yeah, it's from the antiseptic that they put on me. So that's cute. And they told me not to shower tonight. So I get to go to sleep with orange on my body your favorite color <laughs> but yeah that's all all right i'll check back in soon bye hi hello um it's the day after surgery i'm in bed very stiff swollen um i gotta say i think the belly is just about as swollen as yesterday but it's a lot more tender so like you can literally just lightly touch it and it hurts so bad um I can't wait to be up and functioning again. You don't realize how grateful you are for being able to get up and do things until you're not allowed to. Um, I'll show you the belly button. So, there's a belly button update. Um, just too hard to show you the other incision right now. But, overall, um, I'm just really tired because my body's trying to heal itself. But I'm lucky enough to... I have a kitty by me or another kitty I can't tell I think there only I think there might only be one kitty here today yes there's one I don't know where the other guy went yes but he's been sleeping on me for hours I feel so so lucky to have such good little buddies to cuddle with me I still feel pressure on my chest I do have to say that one of the things I didn't like about the surgery was going under anesthesia because it felt like there was so much pressure on my chest, like somebody was squeezing the air out of me as I slowly went to sleep. 
and it made me scared. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to stop breathing. Um, but then I was out, I was out like a light. So I couldn't have a panic attack cause I went to sleep. Um, and then I woke up and I was a whiny baby, uh, like really whiny. I just kept saying I wanted my cats. Um, and then I rambled and rambled on and on the poor nurse, Barb, <laughs> bless Barb woman put up with me. Um, but it was a really pleasant experience. Shout out to Chilton Medical Center in Pequannock, New Jersey. I had a incredible experience at that hospital. Everybody was so sweet and so kind and comforting. Um, my doctor and my anesthesiologist were both like very reassuring and kind. Um, yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time considering, you know, I don't like hospitals, but like it was a decent hospital trip. Um, it's my heating pad. I'm going to move it cause it's no longer warm, but yeah, so I'm just resting. Um, another thing they don't like talk about is that after your tubal, yeah, you have the two incision wounds, but you also bleed as if you're on your period. Um, so I have to wear like heavy duty pads right now. Um, just cause it's easier than having to get up and change thin ones. Um, you know, with wings. Anybody out there who has to use sanitary napkins, pads, whatever you want to call them. You know what I'm talking about. Those wings. Yeah. They're the good stuff. If it doesn't have wings, I don't want it. Um. Alrighty. I'm gonna go to sleep now. Man, the internet really gets to see me at my best here. You're welcome. <sighs> One day we'll be back to doing yoga and like, looking cute. Not wearing the same work sweater for two days straight. Here's what it is. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hello. How are ya? It is the second night post-op. I'm very tired still. Tried to nap today. Couldn't nap. Uh, so just kind of laid around, ate some good food, drank some water, Gatorade, trying to stay hydrated. Um, a little update on the belly. It's bruising. I'll turn the camera as well, but... Highly bloated. Also, though, take into consideration, I had such a good dinner tonight. It was yummy Chinese food. Nice rice. So, yeah, this is a mixture of Chinese food belly and swollen surgery belly. Anyways, though, here we are. Here's the belly bruise. Um, very not cool. And then the incision site's kind of bruised as well. Um, but it's very, very tender. Uh, yeah, but there's that. Um, so yeah, night two, post-op. Pain, soreness, tired. I was able to get up a few more times today than yesterday, so that was cool. I got some homework done today. Um, and there's Salem inside the bathroom again. What are you doing? Excuse the mess. I have not renovated anything, so yeah. But have a great night. Hi, hello. Uh, good to see you. How you doing? I am sore. My house currently has no heat except for this little space heater because the cat decided to jump up onto our old fashioned thermostat and break it. So I have no furnace heat right now, which is awesome because it's really cold in here. Uh, body update on, uh, what day is it? Uh, today's Thursday. So it's three days post-op. Yes. Today's the third day after going to the hospital. Um, yeah. There's still some bloats going on here. Yeah. I can more feel it than see it. It's just, it's a lot. Um, here, I'll turn the camera. Um, here's that. I have bruising on my belly button. Um, as you can see, there's bruising around the incision site, and then there's this one, and so this one's also not fantastic. It's also bruising around it. Um, I'm sore. I'm sore and I'm tired. I took a shower this morning to try to warm up because the house is so cold. I'm currently making hot chocolate. And this guy's just standing here like he did nothing wrong. Nothing at all. Perfect cat, obviously. Shout out to Salem for not allowing me to have heat. But, yeah. Um, 
still a little bit of that pressure in the chest, so I have to take like really deep breaths sometimes. Um, I'm just really bruised and tender and fragile and tired and sitting up isn't easy and I'm standing right now because I just spent most of yesterday laying down and resting and I know I have to get up because if you don't move you can get blood clots. Bunch of things they told me. So I'm up and about right now trying to clean up a little bit before the HVAC guy comes. Or woman. The person. The person who's going to fix my heat. I want to make sure that the house isn't a complete disaster when the person comes to fix my heat. And right now, it's it's bad. It's really bad. Um, so yeah, but that's post-op day three. Um, bruising. Same amount of swelling and bloat. And I just have like a lot of bruising marks here. So is what it is. Um, these leggings have not fit me in a hot minute, and they suddenly do because of all the swelling, so that's cool. But at least I'm cozy, right? <laughs> I also put my yoga mat in the hallway here to make it kind of look like a rug, and I just thought, like, the black and gold went really well with, like, all the other stuff going on in here. Um, I'm really worried about my plants dying right now. It's just a side note. Um, because they're not doing great, because they're also next to the door. Um, but yeah, that's my... I got these hot cocos. I know they're disgustingly unhealthy. I know that. But guess what? They make me happy. Eat what makes you happy. And I'm bringing some to my sister. Um, I had to put this over it because it kept splattering. But here we are now. We can take my cup down. All right. I'll turn this off. It's my little mix espresso. It's like a tiny single serve coffee pot. Um, here we are. Lucky Charms. There was like a whole four marshmallows in there. Is that a joke? That's what I get? I want to speak to the manager. Who made these? Is it Kellogg's? I just want to talk. That's supposed to be okay? There's nothing there. I want the entire top layer of my, co my hot chocolate to have marshmallows. I'm a little dissatisfied. I guess I just had too high of hopes. My bad. <laughs> Well, I'm going to go drink my hot cocoa now and hope that the cats stop breaking things. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Hello. It is day three. Three. Post-op. Um, I don't know why I say it like that. It is day three post-op. Uh, I'm still swollen. I still feel yucky. Do a little belly check. That is the bruising. There's that. Um... It looks worse than it feels, I promise. Um, it does not... Here's... It definitely doesn't hurt as bad as it looks. Um, but it does look like garbage. So, I'm gonna call my doctor and make sure that's normal. But, yeah, it looks pretty awful, doesn't it? <laughs> Oopsie. But, here we are. Uh, I'm taking it easy, taking it slow. I think I'm gonna go to my office job today just to make a little bit of money um say hi to the cat one cat i don't know where the other cat is there's this other cat oh there's other cat say hi say hi cat Ooh, he's so cute but yeah here we are um i'm gonna finish my coffee and i'm gonna go to work for a little bit because I feel up to it, but I'm probably not going to stay for very long, because I get tired really early. Like, I was ready for bed at, like, 7 p.m. last night. So, I just gotta go slow. I gotta get some real food in me, too. Maybe my boss will feed me. Oh, there's an outdoor cat. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go in now. But that is day three post-op update this morning, at least. Um, and I'm gonna call my doc. I'll let you know what what is said about the bruising. Uh, oh, my cats are watching the outdoor cat. <laughs> He's very excited about an outdoor cat. He didn't seem to care. Anyways, that's all. Bye. We'll check in again soon. Hi. It's day four post-op. Uh, it looks even worse today. Um... Here's that. Um, 
it's also not great down at my incision site. Not a cute look. Uh, still very swollen. Yeah, still very swollen. But it doesn't hurt as bad as it looks. It definitely, it definitely looks worse than it feels. So that's good, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's your little visual update. It got really bad last night and I meant to, I meant to record how bad it looked last night, but I think it looks even worse this morning, so it's fine. But yeah, here we are. All this discoloration, lots of bruising, bruising down here. It's a whole thing. But yeah. Day four update. For some reason, we've got blood at one of our incision sites today, so we gotta see if that's normal. But welcome to day five post-op. I look great, don't I? It's really the hair does it, doesn't it? Um, more fun colors happening here, and apparently this bled a little bit last night, so that's cool. Um, I don't know if that's okay. Probably not. Um, but like nothing hurts, so that's good. Uh, swelling is definitely going down, which is cool, but, uh, yeah, that's a little concerning to me. Hi. Hello. It's day six post-op. Uh, woke up without heat, and then I tried to start my car, and all my brake warning lights came on, so that's really cool. Uh, so I don't have heat, I don't have a working car, I'm in a lot of pain because I've been overworking myself and running around. Here's our nice little belly update. Uh, lots of weird colors going on. Um, lower incision keeps bleeding a little bit because my skin is dry and it's cracking. And then also, I don't know if you can tell, but I have bruising from my IV too. So, it's a really rough Monday. It is officially a week post-op. Not doing great. Um... I am going on day two without heat inside of Shelby, so I went to my mom's, hence the change of uh, scenery. Um, here I am. Here's my belly button. We're having a little bit, um, there's a little bit of redness in the belly button. The bruising has improved. Mm -hmm. uh, redness in the belly button, not so great. Uh, lower incision is, she's okay, she keeps splitting. The lower incision keeps splitting because my skin is dry, and so I have to keep putting um, hydrogen peroxide on it to clean it, and then um, triple antibiotic ointment. Hydrogen peroxide and triple antibiotic ointment to make sure that I don't get an infection. Um, the redness is definitely just because I've been running around and overworking myself because I've been trying to make sure that my cat babies don't get sick from the cold and I want to make sure that they obviously have a safe warm place to be. So I've been running around nonstop and now I've ended up an hour away from my home at my mom's. But we have heat, we have a bed, we have food, so everything is good. But yeah, that's the one week post-op update. Follow up to um, one week post-op. This is also given end of the day, full belly after dinner. Here's our swelling. Um, I do have some soreness like right in here. Like I feel like I can feel my ovaries. Sorry if that's a little graphic, but like I feel like I can feel them. Right in here. Um, really sore. It's my own fault for overworking myself. Um, Jesus. Yeah, I just wanted to add that update. Um, good morning. It is eight days post op. Um, let's talk. 
So, uh, hair's a mess because I, you know, was going to brush it after cleaning myself. Um, <sighs> redness around the belly button's about the same. Um, I can tell that some of the stitches are slowly coming off. They are dissolving stitches. Um, my glue came off my lower incision. Because the doc told me, I'm not going to show it to you because it's gross. Uh, doc said, you know, clean it, put cream on it, bandage it. I did. I peeled off the bandage this morning. Bandage took the glue with it. And the sticky part wasn't even on it. It was the pad. The pad took the glue off. And I don't know what to do. Um, I see a little bit of redness. Lost my glue. Um, I still have pain in here. It might be because, like, I haven't taken pain relievers. So I suddenly have pain because I stopped taking pain relievers the past few days. Because I forgot. Um, not gonna lie. Because this is an honest video. Um, down south does not smell great. Um, it's not, like, infection level. But it's not great. And normally. I am wonderful. So, a little concerned about that, too. So, I'm obviously calling the doctor today. Um, I'm, like, really stressed out about this. It's, like, very not cute. Um, very concerning. But this is what it looks like. Here we are. Um, yeah. We're back. It is December 10th, so it's nine days post-op. Um, feeling still really tired because I didn't totally rest uh, for the past week. If I would have rested properly, I probably would have been almost back to normal. But I'm still extremely tired. Got a nice haircut. I just got out of the shower, hence the big shirt and the wet hair. Here we are. Uh, Self-care queen. Um, but my belly button's still a little red. We'll look at that real quick. Let's see. Can you tell? Yeah. Uh, you got a cute little band-aid mark here. And then this incision is looking pretty good. A little bit of bruising. Bru little bruising. Yeah, a little bit of bruising still there. Um, definitely still some bruising on the belly. But it could be worse. Bloat-wise, I mean, I just had dinner. So um, I'm pretty bloated. But... Um, even, like, in the morning, you know, no water weight, no foods from the day. Because we all know your belly goes from, like, this to, like, this by, like, the end of the day. Because uh, there's nothing in your system when you wake up. Okay, so we had to, like, put that one out there. Um, but, yeah, so even in the morning when I wake up, I'm still really swollen. But it'll calm down eventually. It's just uncomfortable because I have to keep wearing, like, the same pair, like, two pairs of sweatpants over and over because all my leggings are too tight. Uh, which is really inconvenient, but we are making it work. Hello, how are you? Welcome back. So, uh, to conclude, um, I just recorded this whole video and then my GoPro crashed and the file was damaged. It said repairing file, the file was not repaired. So, here we go again. <sighs> Thank you for getting through this video. I know it was really long, there was a lot of parts to it, but I wanted to inform you as much as I could about my experience because it was really hard for me to find anything on 21 year olds getting a tubal ligation. I did come across a video where it was titled uh, the worst surgery ever or something like that. Um, and it was kind of disappointing to me because I don't want there to only be videos of how horrible of a surgery it is like that person's experience is completely valid and their story is so important because the thing is is that every single body is different and every single person is going to experience this differently and just as her video is important I believe that it was also important for me to make this video and track my experience which ended up being really positive it is hard to find a doctor who is willing to do a female sterilization on somebody so young. Um, but here we are. I had a really good experience. I think my favorite part of the surgery was 
finding out that I have endometriosis because it was extremely validating after so many years of being in pain and suffering through painful periods and other painful experiences and cramping and heavy flows and still having a heavy-ish flow while on an IUD. Most people don't have a period anymore after getting an IUD. I still had one. So I knew something wasn't right. But yeah, unfortunately, the only way to tell if somebody has endometriosis is during a procedure like mine, where they can go in there and they can really see the uterus. You'll see little spots on the uterus. I will include at the end of this video pictures of the before and afters of my internal organs. If you do not want to see that, I will put like a little trigger page right before it. Feel free to end the video before that. I will do my whole closing and everything and I'll leave it at the very, very end. Uh, but if you're interested, um, it's not bloody or anything. It's literally just photos of the inside of my organs. So it's really pink and healthy looking, which is cool. But yeah, but if that'll make you a little squeamish, like I was a little squeamish looking at it. Um, don't look, but I wanted to be there so people can see what the before and after looks like. And mind you, each doctor does this procedure differently. So my procedure, my doctor took out the full tube. Some people only take out part of the tube. Some people do clamps. Some people get Escher where they put these metal coils into the fallopian tubes. There are many different ways to do a female sterilization procedure. Make sure you know what your doctor is doing to you and make sure that you are okay with that because some can be more painful than others. I quite frankly would not want to shove coils up into my tubes. I don't like foreign objects in my body personally. So that's why I wanted to make sure that his was taking things out, not putting things in. Um, I would, I would just say to somebody who is thinking about getting this procedure, really, really think about your reasons as to why you want to do this procedure. Have your solid reasons, look into the research further, talk to a doctor who is willing to do it. Make sure that they fully inform you because if I went to my doctor and he didn't give me the same exact information that I had already read when I researched, I would have been a little iffy. I would have felt a little weird because even though I showed him that I did my research and I knew everything, he still reiterated all those points with me. He still informed me of the risks, the benefits, how the procedure is going to go, um, all of that. And I feel so incredibly lucky to have had my doctor and I am going to reach out to him to see if he is open to me, including his name. Uh, in which case I will eventually either put his name down in the description or I'll talk about it on my Instagram page at G finding balance, G period finding period balance. Check it out. I have talked about my tiny home on wheels. I didn't talk about my surgery very much at all because I wanted to just do a full video on it. And I was a little hesitant to really even mention it, but you know, everybody's going to have their own opinion on it, but the only opinion that really matters at the end of the day is my own. And the same goes for you. If you're considering this procedure, it is about your body and taking care of you and doing what is best for you. I personally couldn't imagine getting another IUD because my experience was extremely, extremely bad, which I'll talk about another time. Um, I wasn't a fan of all the other options. I hated when I was on the pill. I tried two different types of pills. Uh, I'm extremely grateful. I feel so much gratitude for the fact that I was able to get this surgery in a safe, informative, welcoming environment. Shout out to Chilton Medical Center in Pequannock, New Jersey for being such a clean and safe and welcoming hospital. Shout out to all the secretaries, all my nurses, my doctor, my anesthesiologist. You all did so incredible. And for somebody who never had a surgery before, I felt so safe and I felt just a-okay. I was sitting there in pre-op and they were like, how you feeling? And I was like, oh, I can't wait for it to happen. So it'll be over <laughs> just so I can go home. And I was lucky enough to be able to move from phase one to phase two recovery very quickly. 
Uh, I think they took really good care of me. I think that's why, you know, they gave me enough pain reliever before the procedure started as well as an antibiotic. So I wouldn't have to take anything afterwards, which I think is so neat that they were able to give me that ahead of time. So I wouldn't have to worry about taking antibiotics later. Um, oh, let me do a little update for you. So we kept updates on how everything looked. So here is my bruising. It's very much gone away at this point. Um, you can see that I don't really have any stitches anymore and the redness has gone down a lot in comparison to obviously right after surgery. Here is our lower incision. Our lower incision looks really good. Doc said it looked great at my post-op appointment. So here is not sucking in. Here is sucking in. So as you can tell, bloating has gone down a lot because I was not able to suck in my gut before. Um, before when I tried to suck in my stomach, it looked like when I was pushing out. It was not good. The bloating was really uncomfortable, I will be honest. It was not painful, but it was uncomfortable. I was tender. Um, I couldn't lean against things. Uh, if I would have gotten knocked in the stomach, I probably would have cried. It wouldn't have been a great experience but I was very lucky to have good friends and loving family to help take care of me and look out for me and get me what I need so I was able to recover. I did push myself a little bit too hard last week due to the fact that Shelby ran out of oil and I had to go stay at my family's house. It was a whole thing, but it's all about resting as much as you can in those first few days. You really shouldn't lift anything for three to four weeks, but also I'm not a doctor. Listen to your doctor. They might say that you need longer or less time, depending on your type of procedure. My doctor said four weeks until for full recovery. My bad, four weeks for a full recovery, which means no intercourse, no heavy lifting, no intense exercising, none of that. And obviously I've been sticking to my doctor's instructions. I kept her clean all that but I'm really grateful that I had a successful surgery I feel really good it is what is it I just checked my wrist like I have a, my Fitbit has been broken for at least two months and I still check my watch it's not there I'm kind of we'll talk about fitness devices that I feel like that's a really important one to go over because walking around with a piece of technology glued to your wrist all the time I used to love it, but I have a very different opinion now after wearing one for two, two and a half years. So yeah, kind of don't mind it, but it's also a little inconvenient. I think today's the 18th. So that would mean it's been 17 days since my operation. I feel fantastic. And everybody who's been around me has looked at me and said that I look like a, like a lot better. Um, so yeah, it's all about just taking care of yourself. I highly, 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 highly recommend hydrating a lot before your procedure. If you do end up getting this, I must say that I kept so much water, so much Gatorade, put it all into my system the day before, and it helped with the nausea a lot. I also got a weird little patch on my ear that helped with the nausea. It was right behind my ear, and that stays on for two to three days, I think they said. Um, I ended up taking it off early because I kept accidentally scratching it and touching it, so I just got rid of it. Um, and I was a little nauseous afterwards. I probably should have kept it on a little bit longer for the nausea from the anesthesia because when you come out, you're nauseous. But I was okay. I just rested and stayed in bed, ate dry foods, drank some seltzer, ginger ale. Um, I drank a lot of ginger ale. But I must say that one of my favorite things was... We're good. One of my favorite things was how easy my recovery was. I was very, very lucky because surgery can be really hard on some bodies, but I was lucky enough to be healthy enough and have a quick recovery. So overall, do I recommend this procedure? <sighs> yes, as long as you do your research and do more than what I've included in this video, because I didn't cover everything in this video. Um, I do recommend Mama Dr. Jones I knew of tubal ligation surgery uh, because it was something I looked into when I was really young, but Mama Dr. Jones did an incredible video on it. She is a mom of four, an OBGYN who does YouTube. I adore her content. She delivers everything in such a safe, non-judgmental environment. 
um, she's incredible and she gave me a lot of information that introduced me into this further and thanks mama dr. Jones because you really made a big impact on me in advocating for my reproductive health you inspired me to advocate for myself do my research and get out there and fight for my reproductive rights and I am so grateful for my doctor who heard me out and literally said to me it is not my job to tell you what is right for your body it is my job to inform you make sure you're educated and help you make an educated decision for your body shout out to that man because I just I felt so empowered in making this decision for myself and I feel so so lucky given it took 15 doctors calls and I had to drive an hour for the procedure I'm still very lucky because I've read stories of women who have had to drive even further for this procedure so yeah I guess that's it I think I covered everything um, if you have any questions please feel free to comment down below or shoot me a message on Instagram again G finding balance on Instagram uh, if you liked this video please hit that like button hit the subscribe button and uh, yeah thanks for watching this was a really really long time coming I've been working on this video for a while and I hope you enjoyed it I know that my video quality isn't fantastic and I'm sorry but a girl can't afford a proper video editing software so you get basic Microsoft video editing sorry um <laughs> I wish I could do better but uh we're still getting into this and I'm not about to drop money on a video editing software when YouTube is not like my main uh anything I am very frequently on my Instagram though so if you want to keep up with me I definitely recommend giving me a follow on there again any questions let me know I will happily answer to the best of my ability thank you so much for watching I hope you have a incredible day Happy holidays, whatever you may celebrate. Stay safe out there. Wear your masks, socially distance. Please, please stay safe and healthy. I'll be back soon. Bye-bye.